to River City Yarns. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Oh. <laughs> from the whole team, from everybody at River City Yarns, happy 2018. Cheers. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. Welcome everybody to Podcast On. This is episode 12. 12. And my name is Barb. I'm with River City Yarns. And this is? My, my sister. <laughs> I'm Cynthia. This is my sister. Barb's sister. <laughs> I'm with Barb. Yeah. We're sisters and we're yarn shop owners in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's January. Right. Yeah. Happy New Year. Mm-hmm. Happy New Year to you too. Cheers. Yeah. We should be drinking champagne we or should bubbly be. or totally. something. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Although, uh, yeah. Although it's maybe past the time, hey? I guess so. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think Ukrainian New Year's is, oh yeah, probably by the time we air, that'll be done too. Oh, it might be. Yes. Right. But uh, let me tell you a really, f- I, I think it's a cute story. Um, mm-hmm. Yesterday, or the day before, I can't remember, a couple of days ago, um, our friend Stacy from Red Deer yep. came in the store. And um, she was talking to me about the Advent box. I think it was Stacy. Anyway, um, she, she, you know, she loved that, you know, every day in December, you yeah. opened up a present. And she was just saying that now it's January. She's just feeling kind of like yeah. at a loss. Yeah, <laughs> going because through present withdrawal. <laughs> there's no little gift to open up each morning. And uh, she said, so I think you should have a post-Christmas Advent box. And I said, oh, I'll tell Barb about that because she's always asking yeah. me, what's the next thing? So yeah. Yeah, what's the next thing? She already knows what it is, but she asks me anyway to be polite because she's a good sister. <coughs> anyway, um, I said, well, maybe not a full month, but maybe once a week yeah. you need to have something. And then and then it gets a little bit slower. Like, so, as, so after January and February, it's once every two weeks. And then in March, it's once a month. And then in November, you have to go cold turkey because Ooh. you're waiting for the advent box right. again. Anyway, yeah. I thought that was really nice. So um, people really enjoyed opening up all those little gifts yeah, they in were the advent fun. box. They were fun. We got some really great response from that. And mm-hmm. so we're working on next year's already. Yeah. We've got um, a few local makers that I'm already starting to talk to about Advent 2018. So oh, good. stay tuned. <laughs> so if you want to get in on the Advent box for 2018, yep. what, should, what should people do, Barb? Well, I think uh, this year we're going to open it up just a little bit later. I think September-ish. And we're just going to start shipping right away. Because we noticed, mm. too, we had a bit of a congestion with shipping that many boxes all at the same time to arrive right. before Christmas. So I think we're going to stage it out a bit and um, and take pre-orders and then ship some and right. take more and ship some. So we'll start pre-orders. Um, I think in September, a little okay. bit later. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, the best place to find out about that is our newsletter, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, sign yeah. up for our <clears throat> newsletter if you haven't it's really easy to find you just go to our website and on the bottom of every single page there's a an opportunity to sign up for it it's called the yarn bird Mm -hmm. and you just put in your name and your email address and that way you'll stay connected with everything that we do pretty much so put in your name and your email address um our our third party email program will send you a confirmation email and you must accept that you want to get our newsletter sometimes that confirmation email ends up in your spam folder or in your um trash folder or places like that so just be aware that that's coming and if you have any trouble at all just send a note to us and we'll fix Mm -hmm. it up for you yeah yeah Speaking of the newsletter, Mm -hmm. we did our December, our our January 1st newsletter was a nice look back at 2017. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we had lots of great memories and projects and finished objects and And some events that we did Mm -hmm. too. Yes. We were all around the country, it seemed like. It did. It did. Yeah. Yeah. So if you um, want to take a look at that, we think it's a really nice Mm -hmm. sit down and take a look through what's happened here. And this still stuff that's available today. It's not like it's past and gone. Mm -hmm. Um, We talked about the KFF retreat, for example, and that's coming back too. That's right. Um, There's a link to our uh, December, sorry, January 1st newsletter in the show notes. So just take a look down below Mm -hmm. this uh, podcast and click on the link and you can read that, um, that review of 2017. Right. And just speaking of um, the review and KFF, um, 
we might be making an announcement about KFS signups. Right. So it's supposed to go out January 27th. Signups right. on Ann Bud's website. Right. So in the event that you know you're watching this podcast, January 27th is kind of a date to um, mark your calendar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To mark in your calendar, and then we'll have more information going out on, in the newsletter February one. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So it's another good reason to get the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, so last month we talked about extreme knitting, right? And we did we did extreme knitting with Sarah, right? From Mama Knows Luxury, yeah. And, and we did a blanket. We mm-hmm. did a YouTube video on how to do a yeah. looping blanket, yeah. and it was so much fun. I mean, you you worked on it with needles, and I worked on it with my hands. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was it was just a really fun exercise. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, um, it, I was surprised at how fast that you can knit a blanket using yes. your hands and how with practice, you know, your stitches can be quite consistent. Mm-hmm. The only thing I found about knitting that way is that it was hard on my back. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're kind of leaning over and pulling the loops through. Yeah. So that was, that was the only downside. You have to take I, breaks. Yeah. And I think you need a table so you can kind of um, pull it back yeah. and let it hang down. Yeah. I've seen some videos where people sit on the floor oh. and, and I, I rolled it up as I went, but then that's and a good idea. place to put my arms, but it, it is, I mean, it's a half hour yeah. to knit a blanket. Um, so you, you could take, take break. breaks. <laughs> do as I say, mm-hmm. not as I do. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what's, you know, extreme about it, right? <laughs> You're so extremely into it that yes, you can't let it it's go. True. It's very true. Yeah. 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 So that was fun. And then we said that we would um, pick a winner from, uh, pe- we asked people to post comments about right. their extreme knitting experience. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then we said we'd pick a winner. Right. And we said you would pick a prize. So what right. prize have you picked? So we're giving the winner a $25 gift certificate from River City Yarns. Yeah. Good. And can they use it on our web online store? They can. Yeah. Yes. You can use our gift cards on our online store. The only drawback is that you can't use a gift card and something else. And a credit card. Right. So if your order was over $25, um, you wouldn't be able to use the gift card because it will only take okay. one method of payment. But So I think what we should say is when you get your gift card, look on our website, pick out what you want and yeah. phone us. Yeah. Because we'd be... Happy to um, add in um, anything else that you might want and uh, make your order bigger or yeah. whatever yeah. you'd like. You were distracted by the elf on the shelf, weren't you? <laughs> I was. Sometimes this place seems like it's haunted. <laughs> it's not, though. It's just Elvis. We're, we're alone in the store today. It's Sunday. The store is closed. Yeah. And, well, we're not uh, completely alone. No. Mm-hmm. There's several people here working behind the scenes. Yes. So. A computer just went on upstairs, so we heard it. <laughs> All right. So, um, it's so quiet in here. Our winner, yes. It's it's funny, isn't it? Because it's not like that at all. In fact, yesterday, a woman came in who just moved to Edmonton from Montreal. And she said, I came into your shop to check you out because I you know, like to go to yarn shops. Yeah. And uh, she said, I can't believe how busy you are. It's just crazy in here. Yeah. And I said, yeah, it's, it's great, right? We, we like to feel like we're kind of mm-hmm. like a hub in our little community. And We have had a lot of new customers lately. Mm-hmm. Have you mm-hmm. noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. Also, yesterday there was a lady in from Australia who's moved here for wow. a year. She's doing a, an exchange. She's a teacher. No kidding. And so she's exchanged oh, wow. with another teacher, and she checked us out before she moved here. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> she, she wouldn't come to Edmonton unless there was a yarn shop. I don't know. <laughs> Good so for her. you know, she wanted to knit a sweater for her husband because he's coming next oh, month. Oh yes, yes. And so we talked about sweater patterns. She had Aiden. Oh, but no that's kidding. Sort of that inner collection already that she bought from us. So Aiden is a pattern uh, that's a River City Yarns exclusive designed for us by Anne Budd. Yeah. It's a beautiful unisex sweater, so it's good for mm-hmm. men and women. has a nice Henley collar with a zipper in it. And Anne's tailoring details on that are really good. Yeah. yeah. So she's going to do that for oh, him. Fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous. So lots of new <clears throat> people. Maybe our economy is picking up. Wouldn't that be a nice thing? Well, <laughs> if people are starting to move here, that would be really great. Yeah, that would be really good. Yeah. It's, 
and it's just nice to see new people. We yeah. love seeing our regulars. Don't get me wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, yesterday we had lots of people in, and it's it's lovely to be able to say, you know, hi Gwen, so nice to see you, yeah. right? First All names. of our regular people. But then to to meet new people as well is really exciting. Mm-hmm. And this lovely person from um, Montreal stayed and knit at the table for a little oh. bit, just soaked up the ambiance of the yarn shop. I yeah. can really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, everybody. Um, Barb and I want to, you know, as at the beginning of a new year, at the end of an old year, we always want to say thank you to everybody mm-hmm. for joining us. To our YouTube subscribers, thank you for subscribing and thank you for leaving such lovely comments. Mm-hmm. So tell us now, us. who was the winner? Oh, right, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> I did a random number generator and I came up with number 42. So I counted up from the bottom of our comments. And the winner is a lovely person named Kat Gore. And she wrote about um, her extreme knitting in, in sort of like an extreme, almost duress kind of thing. Her, her mother had a stroke and mm-hmm. um, she took up knitting at that time so that she could have something to share with her mom. And uh, they spent yeah. lots of time together. It's been about five years, I think she said, together mm-hmm. just knitting. And and it was a real connection for her mm-hmm. and her mom. And Yes. Yeah. We can appreciate that too. For I mean, sure, you know it's it's good to have something that you can share with a family member mm-hmm. um, or a friend, yeah. you know, and something that gives you uh, a creative outlet and yet isn't isn't big enough or well, busy enough that you can't talk. And sometimes you just want to take your mind off of things too, right? True. Which is really nice about knitting. You have to, for a few moments, focus on a pattern or right. a stitch technique or something so anyways thank you to everybody who left comments i think we had over 40 of them Mm -hmm. yeah and so uh, that was great it was just a lot of fun and i think we're going to do another one right yeah well i i loved reading the stories Mm -hmm. i mean it's it's um inspirational right right. it's motivating so yeah let's do another one Mm -hmm. um so we're on our next kind of extreme challenge right would you call it a challenge i I think so why not you know the, we'll use the word loosely, but <laughs> so we're going to challenge each other mm-hmm. to knit to knit a sweater. Mm-hmm. It's not really a sweater; it's it's a jacket, cardigan. Yeah, mm-hmm. do you want it's me to wrap with sleeves? Chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, for months, I've been wanting to knit this. This is the Janesville jacket. It's done out of wool stock from Blue Sky Fibers. Mm. I saw several iterations of this piece in June when I was at TNNA. They had a bunch of samples there and a lot of their staff had knit them and they look so good. This is one of those pieces. It's kind of like the easy folded poncho. It looks great on every body shape. So I've been wanting to knit this and I convinced Cynthia that we should do. (laughs) She said, I dare you. I knit along. Yeah, that's all I had to do. I just had to say that and she was in. (laughs) <laughs> so um, we're going to do a like a knit along. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a proper knit along. A proper yep. knit along. Okay. along, yep. So we've, we've challenged our staff. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, we didn't actually have to challenge them. We just said, we're doing this. And they said, we want to do it too. Yeah. And so we'll put up, a, we have a page set up on Ravelry yeah. that you can sign up on. And uh, you just need to, um, on Ravelry, you just need to log in and leave a comment that says, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Um, that gives us your link. You don't have to post a lot of comments. You can right. put pictures up if you want to. And and so, like, normally a knit along will go, like, several months, right? Yeah, especially can. for a cardigan. Right. And we thought, well, if this is an extreme one, mm-hmm. we should put a short time frame on it. Right. Plus, it's a sweater. We want to wear it before right. the winter is over, right? That's right. <laughs> and, you know, do we have to do it out of wool stock? I guess... Oh, so I said to Barb, what are the rules on mm-hmm. the on the um, on the knit along? We're doing it out of wool stock. We are. We want to wear this one in wool stock. And but, I love the colors. But you said no. Well, and I don't think so. No. I think you know, let's do it out of whatever you know you want to use. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ameris has started one out of Epic. Yarn. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, I, the idea I think is that you want something that's a little heavier than a worsted weight, maybe mm-hmm. sort of an Aran weight, so you can get gauge. But oh, go well, for it. Now let's talk about that. Okay. Because um, so we're using wool stock, and it is a worsted weight, 100% wool. It's applied yarn. It's gorgeous, um, and it's you and know it's wool, but it's 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 not it's not a, got an itchy feeling to it. It's, oh, it's soft. It's beautiful. Especially knit loose. Um, mm-hmm. I think when you, when you knit a uh, wool at a looser gauge, it just brings out all of its warmth and coziness mm-hmm. and softness. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
So talk about the colors that you chose, because this mm-hmm. one is uh, Midnight Sea. This yeah. is the most beautiful navy. It Midnight almost sea. has a, a bit of a light blue undertone to it. Mm-hmm. It's it's very like a dark, dark mm-hmm. ocean. So you're going to do the whole thing and put your stripe mm-hmm. here in the yeah. lighter gray? I'm using um, Midnight Sea and Gray Harbor, because mm-hmm. they go together, right? Sea Harbor. Oh, it's going to be really mm-hmm. pretty. And I like I like that navy blue color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and what are you using? I'm going to use um, the dark gray, mm-hmm. and then I've got the lighter medium gray. So this one's called oh. Cast Iron. She's got her yarn all wound up already. I do. <laughs> and this one's Storm Cloud. So these are the shades I'm going to use. Nice. I picked these because they go with kind of I, with my Ann Bud skirt. I was going to say, yeah, you're wearing your beautiful Giles tweed yes, Ann Bud skirt. skirt. We'll get a picture of Barbara and her skirt afterwards yes. and, and pop it in here. Big thank you to Pat. Thank you, Pat, for needing my <laughs> skirt for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's no, no way that we could knit every single sample ourselves. Oh. And so we have so many kind and generous people who right. knit with us and for us and yeah and pat's one of our favorites <laughs> um it's true you know people i think people sometimes think that yarn shop owners and employees get a lot of time to knit but we are actually working full time yeah <laughs> so yeah. it is hard to get time into knit and it's great um, because there are people who love to knit and who love to knit with nice new fibers but you know it's um you can only make so many things for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So when we have people knitting for the store, it's nice because you don't have to find a gift for it or mm-hmm. find someone to fit it, right? right. It just comes in. It's it's uh, showcased in our store, and it's a sample that people can try on yeah. and take a look at for technique. It's really nice to be able to go into a shop and try on samples. It is. that helps you to figure out what size to knit yeah. and how much yarn you're going to need. Yeah. So we started with a gauge swatch. Right. Barb, Barb said to me, okay, um... Be, you know, cast on a gauge swatch and let's let's get going. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, so we you used... came up with the number of stitches. <laughs> so we want it when you do a gauge swatch, you want to have it to be about five inches square. And so I looked at the pattern and and the gauge is done in seed stitch right. in the pattern. So um, I so took the on... numbers for the gauge and added on an extra inch and said, uh, you know, cast on 20 stitches and then knit for five, mm-hmm. five inches. And so we're using the same yarn, and we're using the same size needles. Right. Used sixes. I use sixes. Mm-hmm. And look at the difference in our swatches. <laughs> Isn't that neat? So I think this tells us something about personality. <laughs> You're a little tight? I'm a little tight. <laughs> okay, I didn't say that. <laughs> she did. Um, I, I do. I do. I think, I think the way that... I know, sometimes it's just the way you hold the yarn. And yeah, it may yeah. be just what needles you're using. Okay, what, what show you're needle? watching when you're doing this watch. What needles did you use? I used my Addies. Oh, my 6mm Addy interchangeables. Lace? Uh, no, I have the basic tips. So, yeah. Mm. What did you use? I used Addies too. Mm. My six mil mm-hmm. lace tip. Yeah. No, uh, long lace. So, yeah, okay. it was a sharp tip. Still a metal needle. Yeah. But it, it just goes, I think this is really important because um, a lot of times people will pick up the pattern and they'll pick up the yarn and then they pick up the needles and then they go home and they cast on a sweater. Mm-hmm. It's really important <coughs> to do a swatch mm-hmm. first because we're all different. That's right. Yeah. And and I know some people, sometimes people say, well, I knit. I knit to the gauge in the pattern. I'm always on. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great, except there's somebody knit that pattern, and it's their gauge. Yeah. It's, it's not right, like a right? machine knit it, right? That's right. So um, given that we're all different, it's really important to do a swatch mm-hmm. and then to measure it and make sure that you're on gauge. So um, I might need to switch you, to a bigger needle. Have mm-hmm. you measured yours? I haven't yet. Okay. Well, I did I did a little bit when before I washed it, but that's the other thing. When you're doing a swatch, mm-hmm. you need to wash it. Yeah. Because it changes. And you did two yeah. swatches. I did. Yeah. This one's washed and this one's not. And do you notice a size difference? And if you lay one on top of the other, do they look any different? Not really. The size is about the same, but you can feel a softness. Mm-hmm. So the yarn is kind of um, bloomed and softened up yep. a bit. This one's still a little bit stiff and crunchy. a little more crunchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think you're, so again, with seed stitch, there's a difference in the gauge between your purl stitch and your knit mm -hmm. stitch. So looking at Barb's um, washed swatch, I think the stitches look a lot more consistent than they do in yeah. the unwashed swatch. I agree. So when that wool blooms up, it makes it makes a difference. I think I'm going to do another one, though, and use my... Um, um, Leica, Leica needles. Leica, yeah, Leica yeah. Needles. So wooden needles instead mm -hmm. of metal. See I think so, because I found it was just a little slippery. Mm -hmm. My stitches were kind of sliding around. Right. And I've got some kind of different sized holes, mm -hmm. you know, between the, the knit and the purl. So yeah. I think I might yeah. try that. All right, and so what, this entire garment is made out of seed stitch. Right. So it's a lot of back and forth. So the cowl's going to run from January 15th to Valentine's Day. February 14th, so one month. Yeah. And it's not like it's um, it's extreme knitting in that you're going to have to knit a little bit each day to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a, it's a lot of seed stitch, so you need to take some breaks. I was thinking it, complicated. you were going to set a two-week time frame for it. <laughs> I mean, that would really be extreme, wouldn't it? Knit a sweater in two weeks? Or? That would be very extreme. Would it? And I, don't, I, I think I could do it, but I don't know that you could. So there's... <laughs> Oh, I almost let that one. <laughs> She's thinking ahead. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I'm thinking about our staff. You know, and all those lovely people out there who, you know, mm -hmm. for a month is month is a reasonable amount of time. Okay, I, that's <laughs> what I mean. Extreme. It's not extreme. Oh, I think it's pretty extreme for Do a sweater. You? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll try it. Considering I have to finish a pair of thrummed mittens before I. Can oh, I know. On, so. I have a blanket on the go too. So. <laughs> okay. All right. So we talked about. Um, our prize giveaway. We've mm -hmm. talked about our um, our new cal that's coming yep. up, and, and the prize for that. Oh right! Oh this. right! Drum roll! Yeah, we're just going <laughs> to give away one of these little hat kits. These are so much fun. Mm. They have uh, all the different colors. Twenty-one different colors. Wool stock mm -hmm. in minis. That's so nice. Very fun. Yes. So it's hopefully, um, we'll have these left in a month's time. That's why another reason why I wanted to we'll have to we'll put, put one, one away. away. Absolutely. We'll yeah. one away. So to qualify for the prize, you need to um, register on our Ravelry page. And how you do that is to go to Ravelry and find River City Yarns. Uh, we'll also have a link to it on the show notes below here. And you just um, type in, I'm in. Now, in order to qualify for the prize, you will have to finish the right. sweater. And so the way that we do that is um, you just... Uh, post a picture of your finished project on your Ravelry page mm -hmm. and you can link to it. Um, what if somebody's already finished one? That um, counts? Well, I think, I think in the theme of extreme, you should actually start. If you started before January 15th, fine. But I think if you're finished, you're finished. Okay. But if you're not finished, if you started and you haven't finished yet, keep knitting and okay. enter it then. Does that sound? Yeah, that sounds fair. Sounds okay? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. Challenge is on. <laughs> Start knitting. <laughs> All right. So, Barb, tell us about Flash Mob this right. month. Okay. So, f let's let's go back a little bit. For 2018, for Flash Mob, and that's kind of our once a month special yarn, limited edition, only available through our shop. Um, we've created a theme for 2018, and it's all about Canada mm. and Alberta and Edmonton. And so Cynthia and I went through and picked out 12 images that kind of capture for us some of our local flavor here and uh, kind of what it's, what it's like to be Canadian and mm -hmm. Albertan and, mm -hmm. and then a few special memories. And this very first one is so special for me because we spent um, how many years? Ten going to Jasper. Ten or eleven. We did a train trip every year mm -hmm. that went up to Jasper. We're so lucky because we, we are here in Edmonton on the main line that goes across Canada. And so the train stops here. We jumped on. We went up to Jasper. The train, uh, we, we got off the train and the, it kept going to Vancouver mm -hmm. and came back three days later. So it was perfect for us. Right. We did a knitting retreat every year. We called it Wool, Wine and Wheels. And mm -hmm. the first year we didn't have any big names. It was just no. you and me. Yeah. <laughs> then, but you know, we've then, got such a great community here yeah. of people who love to knit and just love yeah. to socialize that we didn't have any trouble finding friends. We and then we invited, you know, the biggest names that we could come up with. Mm -hmm. And we made some amazing friends. Yeah. And it was, it was a big risk. I remember, you oh, know, sure. we had to, we had to 
prepay for the hotel and the to borrow train money. And <laughs> it was it was you know I hope I hope we can make this work and yeah. it became very successful. And so um, yeah, so so you picked a picture. So we picked a picture, mm-hmm. and this is our first picture. This is just a, an Im- an image that I found on Pinterest, but it's the uh, Canadian National kind of locomotive, mm-hmm. and um, behind it, this one this I is think a is a freight train. Freight train. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes they'll pull the same kind of train pulls uh, passenger cars yeah. too. And you know what else this reminds me of, Barb? Hmm. Just a little interjection. The train ships were wonderful, but you remember where we grew up? Yeah. The train ran by our our farm, right. and when we would just, um, stand at the end of the road waiting for the bus, the train would come barreling by. Yeah. And you'd hear, feel the ground shake. And yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Really Really neat. So it's and a childhood memory as well. This photo too doesn't that look like Entwistle? It know, does look big, like the bridge there. There's yeah, a big bridge yeah. there. So that's going to be our that that was the inspiration for our flash mob. So then the challenge became okay, who can dye these colors for us? So you sent this picture to to Kim from Flock Fiber, whom we met at Knit, Knit City, City. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and Kim immediately kind of resonated with this image. And she created not just one, but three colorways for mm-hmm. us. So, so can locomotive first. red, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> and then this gorgeous brown, which is in the you know in the earth and the tracks and, the, mm-hmm. and maybe even in the like sort of in the mountainous area or the foothills yeah. that you're going through. Yeah, and, and all then. the dead bushes <laughs> yes. in this winter time, right? <laughs> yes. And then look at this. Yeah. All right. So you hold up one of each of these. I think we actually have to take the bands mm, off. That's a really good idea. Have a peek at it here, because this is beautiful. So look at all the speckles that are in here. Right. So there's a solid. So all the solids are in there as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure she used probably the same dye bath, mm-hmm. or the same dyes, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'm just going to open this one up because. There's not just um, some browns and some reds in here. There's a lot of blue, too, from the sky. Right. So this is her Take a Hike sock base. Yeah. So you could use this for socks or shawls or hats, sweaters, whatever you like. It's 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. Yeah. And I knit up a little sample. Kim sent me some little samples, and it's really nice. It's got a really nice twist to it. And I think that amount of nylon is going to make great socks. Yes. Nylon yeah. is important in socks. I've been repairing socks recently. Have so you? <laughs> I really appreciate that nylon. So yeah. this one, this speckled one is called Locomotive. And then um, the brown one is called Tree Bark. And the red one is called Red. No. Um, no. No. Oh, sorry. The red is Locomotive. The red's Locomotive. <laughs> okay, get this straight, okay. will ya? The brown is tree bark. Oh, good. That oh, was okay. her that made that mistake, not me. <laughs> and this one is between the pines. Between the pines. Yeah. That's really nice. Isn't that nice? So this is going up. Um, this is going out uh, on January 15th. No. Oh, my goodness, Barb. On January, January 20th, 20th. That's our flash mob date, yes. the 20th of each month. At 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. It'll go online first. Mm-hmm. So your first opportunity is to purchase it through our uh, e-commerce store. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be out in the shop the next day. If there's any left. If there's any this left. This one we didn't have as much of. So okay. if, you, um, if you do want a skein of this or three, mm-hmm. like I'm getting, mm-hmm. um, buy it online. We'll ship it out to you. Yeah. Or you can um, choose to pick it up in the store if you're local. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Kat, you can use your gift card. Um, (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Call us and we'll we'll deal with that because it'll be a little more than $25. But yeah, this is lovely. Isn't it beautiful? It feels so hefty mm -hmm. too. You know, she's done it. Yeah. A nice job skeining these. Yes, yes. I like I like the size of the skeins. They yeah. fit in your cubby really nicely at home. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, All Kim. Right. You did a stellar job. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slip these back in my basket. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then let's <laughs> talk about <clears throat> FOs. Yeah. You, you have a few FOs, don't you? I have... Finished objects? Well, I have a... Yeah, I have, I have one. 
uh, well, I have two finished objects. So I finished the sweaters, that, the Christmas sweaters mm -hmm. for Rachel and Hayden. I don't know if you remember, but in a previous podcast, I was debating about which, which to use, Adam and Eve or Eden. So I picked Eden. Uh, I picked two colorways, um, Hyacinth and uh, Galilea. And I knit two sweaters for Rachel and Hayden. And I'll, I'll show you some pictures because, of course, the sweaters are on the children mm -hmm. now. And so um, I have some really adorable pictures. But I, I think what's really cool about what I did was that I started um, Rachel's sweater in Hyacinth. And I worked my way down using the Kindred Knits pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Remember I talked about the worksheet that's in the back of her book? Right. So I started in Hyacinth. And then when I got to about mid-body, I started striping it with um, Galilea and then I finished it off in, in Galilea. Yeah. And then for Hayden's sweater I did the opposite. And where the where the stripes go, where the blend is, I think it's just a very cool effect. And I did that in the arms as well. So, so. you kind of did your own fade yeah, in yeah. a sweater. Yeah. Do you have a pattern written up? <laughs> no, no I, I, Susan's the pattern, got the pattern. The pattern's in Susan okay. B. Anderson's book, um, and it's uh, it's a worksheet pattern. So you measure a T-shirt and mm -hmm. you fill in your numbers, and she tells you what to knit. It's a top-down design, but really the, the the construction of blending colors is you know just to just to do stripes. Mm -hmm. So you could put a or, modification or just some sort of notes up about what you did I oh uh, sure sure I can do that on my Ravelry page yeah. absolutely yeah yeah because they so. are so cute I saw yeah. them they look really really cute <laughs> helps them. to have cute models right wow yeah. and then and then Eden it's just such a beautiful yarn the colors are really bright and vibrant um, and I think even if I hadn't changed colors if I'd used the two skeins of Galilea for one sweater I would still do some striping when I started to run out of one because I think, you know, with hand-painted yarns, you don't want to just finish one skein and start another one. Mm -hmm. The amount of color that's been applied to each skein is a little bit different. So um, it's good. It's a good thing to blend them together before you, well, you, before you change completely. It was intentional for you, though, to use two colors, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. You yeah. It wasn't that you just had two skeins. No. No. no, no, I, I definitely wanted to change colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also a more effective way of using up your yarn. Because, you, you know, you don't have to, you, you could buy three skeins of yarn and blend them together and get two, two small sweaters out of them, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Anyway, so I, I, I finished that. How about nice. you? Um, well, I think I started like half a dozen things. <laughs> uh, the only thing I finished, um, I think I finished this cowl mm. before New Year's, I think. I think that I was think my last... Did project of the year. I think you wore this to Boxing Day when we got together with our yes. other lovely sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I had some Shibui at home mm. and there's, there was no pattern for this, but a few people want it. So I'm yes. going to write a pattern up for Good. it. Good. Okay. But it's, it's just a tube, um, of, um, yeah. So what do you use? To? So you use Shibui. I see there's silk cloud in there. Yeah. I used three Shibui yarns. I used pebble uh, staccato and silk cloud. Okay. And again, a six millimeter needle. So it was fast. I think I knit this up in a few, several hours. It didn't take long. Right. Um, and then, uh, when I ran out, I joined another color because right. I happened to have, uh, three skeins in this one. I think it's graphite and then in pollen or pollen. Okay, so yeah. so each half is three skeins of Shibuya yarn in the same color? Yeah. Okay, so you use six skeins all together? Right. Okay. And I had a fair amount left over because I think Staccato has 175 meters or something like that, and mm -hmm. the rest, I mean, Silk Cloud is 300. Right. So I had lots left over, but yeah, I wanted to try and play around with some Shibuya. And yeah. Was lovely. Good. So you're gonna write up a pattern, mm -hmm. and then you're going. We'll, we'll post it on our free patterns page yeah. on our website, and you'll also maybe put it up on Ravelry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It's just got a little turning um, row too, yeah. which kind of um, helps it kind of look like a bit of a turtleneck. Or, right. Yeah. Uh, and it, well, it helps to divide the pattern up too, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you've got the same pattern on both sides, but you've got this. Sort of yeah, natural turning place in it. I bet you could wear it the other way around too. Oh, if you for wanted. sure. I did a bunch of pictures of it so yeah. I can show people how to. So there isn't really a wrong side or a right side. No, it's kind of reversible, really. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. 
And how does it feel? It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's something about shibui yarn. It's just right. so soft. And I love the halo of the kitsil or the so it's cloud. cloud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And their yarns are, their yarns are designed to be blended together. I think they make like, you know, they, most of their yarns are, it's like a lace weight, fingering weight. And so you can combine them together and use a bigger needle and get your own unique yarn when mm-hmm. you do that. Yeah, and the yeah. colors are, I'm sure, dyed together because they're right. really, really close. Right. So in this newsletter coming up, we've got a little feature on Shibui as well. Right. So Shibui should... has um, redone four of their top patterns, and they've got a new lookbook that's um, beautiful. They've taken four patterns and then redone them in new yarns. So if you haven't seen that, have a look. We're also gifting a free download of one of those patterns to everybody who's shopping this month uh, with Shibui. Right. And so you can get a free download of one of those four patterns. So if you order online, we can slip that download card into your Absolutely. mail order as well. Yeah. Just Perfect. let us know which one you yeah. Oh, I guess it doesn't matter. We just give you the card and then you can pick whichever one you want. Nice. Oh, so the card enables you to pick one of those four patterns. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. It has a code <clears throat> on it. Perfect. Yeah. So we'd be happy to ship that out. Good. Okay. So that's fin- and I'm wearing a finished object, although this was finished a while ago. But my my lovely sister Barb made me an easy folded yeah. poncho, and um, it's it's here in the store as a store sample. I hardly ever get to wear it, so I thought I would wear yeah, it today. Yeah, it's nice and cozy. It's, it's very cozy. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Do you have any whips that you brought with you? Um, you want to show us one? Sure, I got one. I know do we you? we I have. A, do I have one? <laughs> How many do you have? Oh my goodness, Barb! I can't even. I can't even. I, I have a. Me. I have a closet in our spare room. Yeah. What my husband is watching, and it is like I, you know, I shove everything in there and close the doors, and then, and then I think, you know, I'll get to it. Mm-hmm. I'll get to it. But it's full of unfinished projects. Oh my gosh! <clears throat> Every six months, I go through and purge. Do you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I go through all those do. because, you know, you get tired of something or you decide <laughs> it's, it's not working, right? And it's, it's much true. easier just to rip it back and start over. And right. It's just, it's sweaters. I think sweaters, oh. I, I got a Beth Brown Reinsel Gansey that I have to finish the sleeves on it. No. And I have a Nikki Epstein cardigan. I have to finish, I have to put it together. You know, it's it's... It's those ones. I keep thinking, I just need to retire. <laughs> I can do all these projects. No. But, um, you just anyway. need to you know, make a competition out of it. <laughs> Maybe you that's it. You need to it. say to me, that's okay, it. you knit one too. And... <laughs> all right, so what have you got here? Okay, so um, I've got a blanket. Well, it's, um, it's the wrap oh from Church Mouse. Oh, my Most. goodness, Barb. This is so pretty. Thanks. So I had a whole bunch of leftovers of this Kitsil K's. Kitsil K's stripe? Yeah. And then you're putting solids with it? I'm putting solids with it. Wow. It is light and soft and airy. Um, just feels like... Yeah. Oh, I love beautiful. knitting with this. So, so this is a wrap? Mm-hmm. Or, or a blanket? Um, no, it's a wrap. It's the um, color play. So it's where you play with colors. Right. And that's so that's gorgeous. what I'm doing. Absolutely gorgeous. And I love it because, you know, you can just sit around in the evening and yeah. do a few rows and don't have to worry about a yeah. pattern. Or, And I just noticed I'm carrying it in my stadium bag. Mm-hmm. And... I noticed you've got you've been using your yeah. stadium bag too. I know. I I, I cleaned some project out of it and yeah. <laughs> started carrying it around again. And I love this bag because you can see everything that's in mm-hmm. it. Well, I think I might have to get more of these because yeah. we're out of them. They're really nice. They're really nice. They're very handy. And maybe some small ones for project, you know, for tools. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good idea mm-hmm. too. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, that's you beautiful, Mark. Okay, well, um, let me... so. Let me just say, I'm, I've resolved to finish my um, Hohi Locatelli sweater. See, Ooh. it's been... Oh, you have your whole sweater in that <laughs> little tiny bag. Correct. In there, yes. So this is this is uh, Gilesk, uh the wool cotton. Right. And, um, and I'm just, I, again, it's like you, it's, it's the part where you're just knitting around and around and yeah. around. So I am resolved to finish this so is one. Is this the top? Mm-hmm. Look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, I got to get it done. You do. I do. I will not stuff this one into the closet in the spare room. <laughs> or back into that little bag. You need a bigger bag. Yeah, I'll put it I'll put it in my stadium tote. So whose bag is that? This one? 
Yeah. This bag? This is a Mrs. Brown's bag. Oh, yeah. From this Jody. is one of the older designs where she has the drawstring top. I love top. those drawstring I do too. Bags. Yep. Yep. It's very cute. And, yeah. And it does, I mean, it's okay to, it's okay to wrinkle up your yarn when you're working on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I am using my leek needles in there. Nice. Nice. Um, and then I'm making my husband a pair of thrummed mittens. Oh. Yeah. Does he know? Uh, yes, he knows. Um, and there, it's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. This one, this is a little interesting, guys. I'm using a fleece artist kit, and my husband has big hands. So what I do is I start with a provisional cast on. Look at that. And I then I do color. the I do the hand of the mitten and the thumb, and then I come back and I do the cuff afterwards because I might run out of yarn. It's right. quite possible. And I've also I I will run out of roving as well. So I bought an extra. Path. skein of roving uh for for men's mittens you know you need it you don't want to run out and and you don't want to put any thrums in that cuff anyways right you no want the cuff plain that's right so if i need to i'll just pick up another um skein of a of a yarn um that's a solid and i'll make the cuff nice and long and mm-hmm. not worry about running out of yarn nice. so that's and that's nice. one of those little go Go bags, right? Yeah, yeah. I also have. have a. I also have a project. I also oh, have more. This, <laughs> this is, well, this is my. Um, this is my other mitten. So that's the second one. This is oh, the first look one. At so that. see what I mean? It's it's cuffless right now, but I'll put the cuff on after I've knit the second mitten. That's the so thumb. cool. So will that fit him? Yeah. I may have to, I, I didn't weave in my oh, top yeah. yet, so once I get both mittens done and the cuff on, we'll come back here and we'll just make sure that mm-hmm. it's tall enough. But yeah, so far so good. You know, sometimes for, for when you're knitting for other people, you, you can't weave in all your ends. You yeah. gotta keep going. And you know, it's <clears throat> kind of sad to say, but the weather is just right for those mittens. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> freezing here well it was, it was freezing and then it warmed up and then yeah it, yeah then it and then it and then it gets warm and then it freezes again and it gets icy and mm-hmm. it's sort of the yucky time of year yeah but as our dad used to say the nice thing about january is that every day gets a little bit longer oh because of the daylight mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so every day you know you have a little more sunshine yeah it's good and you know being here i kind of love it here because you know we do get four distinct seasons mm-hmm. and it's sunny, you know, mm-hmm. every day. It, it could be as, you know, freezing cold, but at least the sun's out. Big prairie sky. Yeah. 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 That's nice. Yeah. Now, speaking of staying warm, mm-hmm. tell us about earth yarns. Because we have yarns. a big, chunky earth yarn. Right. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, a new yarn, and uh, this is it kind of right behind us. Yeah. I'll just pull out. Yeah. How about if, if we I give you this? Yeah, for sure. Earth, It's so it's spelled uh, U-R-T-H. Right. And this is a yarn that we get from um, Estelle. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Estelle distributes this yarn in Canada, mm-hmm. and um, it was a new one for us. It was kind of shown a lot, I think, at the show last year, too. Mm-hmm. So it was quite popular, and we brought in the fingering and the bulky or chunky weight Mm -hmm. of it colors are amazing they are beautiful and then we're each each skein that's sold they plant a tree and so when we put up our display we put the yarns up on little trees um and we thought that would help help Mm -hmm. uh, here's a couple of skeins that you can show everybody so this is the uh, bulk of the chunky yarn. <clears throat> it's an extra fine superwash merino, mm-hmm. and it's uh, 60 meters mm-hmm. to 100 grams, eight stitches over four inches, and its colors are gorgeous, and it's so, so soft. And they so, stripe. And they stripe. And they stripe. Yes. And, and they're really durable. I knit this one ball of yarn into a cowl, and I had to try several different patterns oh yes there's only 60 meters and i just wanted to use one skein so i i think i ripped back three or four times <laughs> and hit the entire thing yep. wasn't happy with it so i finally ended up with a free pattern that we actually have on our website oh perfect this pattern was for the rasta neck warmer right yes and so it's nice because it kind of showed off the so stripes soft. in the yarn and right. this yarn is durable i can't tell you yeah, yes. I was a little worried about that, thinking it's so soft it might not hold up. Mm-hmm. It held up perfectly. Yes. So here's the striping effect. Here, we'll hold it this way. 
And you can kind of see how I, um, a half of it's done in garter, and then the pattern tells you to do a knit one yarn over to create a bit of a lace panel, and it sort of starts to bias, which is really pretty, because when you put it on, you can, you want to try it on, Cynthia? Um, you can, I put a button on the other side, so that you can just kind of button it up, and it doesn't matter where you put it. You can button, see that it looks perfect. You mm -hmm. can button it like that, and it's got a, a kind of a wide effect. Or you can put it on the side, and, and it flips over like a collar. So it's just mm -hmm. kind of really versatile. Oh, it feels so Doesn't soft. It feel nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's this really is going to be a great yarn. It comes in beautiful colors, and then it also comes in a fingering weight. Right. So right. this one has way more meters, but that same stripe effect. Is there a nylon in this one? Good question. This one, extra fine superwash merino, hundred percent. So okay. no nylon. Okay. No. So this would be, and, but you don't want to put this on your feet anyway. You want to put this on your head, around your neck, over your shoulders. Mm -hmm. There's a beautiful shawl pattern. Yes. Um, that everybody, uh, we put a link to in our last newsletter. Yeah. Um, that is not, it's not, it's not Estelle's pattern or Earth's pattern. It's a, it's, it's an a individual designer, designer on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll put a link to it in the show notes as well so you can see She's it. She's done a great job of kind of playing with the color work with short right. rows. Right. And so that would be a really pretty piece to do. And yep. then Lucinda um, from Lucinda. Montrico. Oh, she did a top. She just whipped it up in you know, like a week. <laughs> yes. And um, she's she's probably got a pattern up on her website for it too. It looks really great. So because this yarn's so new, there's probably not a lot of pattern uh, images up on Ravelry yet, but they're starting to build. Right. So to do this shawl that's pictured on this poster, you need two skeins of the um, earth fingering, mm -hmm. and then you need one skein of a solid. Mm -hmm. Um, to yeah. round it out yeah and then the other thing that's really nice about this yarn is it's made in turkey and it's um supporting a woman's cooperative there too mm, so very that's nice. nice in that you know there's um it's all good yeah it's all good and it's very soft and then um uh, mario wound this up into a ball for us mm -hmm. so we could see how, how the colors stripes. stripe out mm -hmm. mario is barb's husband yes and the weekend ball winder yeah yeah and uh, it, we had a little bit of a kerfuffle with this <laughs> skein. It didn't want to cooperate. It was wound too tightly the first time, so he had to he had to massage it gently into a more into a more um, loosely knit ball mm -hmm. or wound ball. Yep. So here's the trees. Yeah. We'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll yeah. take a few snaps and show people that one, yeah. and then we might actually have a little chat with John from Estelle Yarns mm -hmm. that He's will. Coming will interject into this video so we'll let you will we, yeah ask him a few questions about estelle and kind of mm -hmm. how they come to find some of these really great yarns yeah yeah and then bring them to you and then bring them to you yeah, yeah <laughs> and to us <laughs> All, All right. right. Anything else on our list? I don't think so. I think that's okay. it. We're done. Okay. For today. So join the cal. Um, mm -hmm. You just have to knit the Janesville jacket. You don't have to use wool stock yarn. Uh, you do have to finish it by February 14th, and the prize is awesome. Mm -hmm. So join up and and, we'll and congratulations, Cat. We'll be in touch with you on your gift card. And yeah, mm -hmm. thanks everybody. Bye now. Bye. Okay, so. All right. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We're here with. This is John Peacock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi. John is with. Estelle Yarns. Mm -hmm. Estelle Yarns. And we're yeah. out of Toronto. Right. Mm -hmm. So today what we're going to do is, um, I've asked John if he wouldn't mind in uh, interviewing with us. Mm -hmm. um, how many times a year, John, do you get to come um, and do we sit three, down? Three times. Three yeah. times a year, yeah. I get to sit down with John from Estelle and make decisions about what kind of yarns we're going to bring into the shop. Right. 
we thought it might be interesting for you to sit in on a few minutes of a um, of a rep uh, sales rep meeting, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and see some of the decisions that Barb has to make, like turning your phone to silent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do that now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and look at all the some of the new yarns that are coming out. And well, we'll mm-hmm. keep this segment really short, though. We'll focus on one specific yeah. yarn sure. um, because we were just talking about it a little while ago. And so we'll carry on the conversation. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let you guys <laughs> go ahead with the meeting, and I'm gonna go man the camera. Okay. All right? So I'll see you. I'll see you behind the scenes. Here we are. It's you know January, and we're making decisions for. You know, May or June. For May or June, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. And in another few months, we'll probably be making decisions for September, October. That's correct. So we've we've actually putting autumn, winter, uh, 2018, 19 to bed. It's almost finalized, mm-hmm. and um, so we, you know, we really do work a year out yeah. um, because you know to get uh, time in each mill for them to you know. Do your, you spin your product? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you have to be quick right. because everybody's doing the same thing, right. and the mill only has so many hours in a day. Of right. course, yeah. So yeah. it's so there's it's kind of like a real calendar of events that have to happen in a certain sequence in order for us to be able to bring yarn that you want to the shelves yeah. in time. Yeah, right? it it's, just doesn't happen. No, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to show you today was um, sort of on the back of the Earth yarn, the Unique. Right. Right. So they've come out with a new quality of 100% Merino. Okay. And that's the uh, that's the worsted weight. And this is called Earth. Now, we bought the fingering and the chunky. That's right. We didn't get the worsted. So is this the one that's out right now, or is this coming? No, this... Um, this so you bought Unique, which is a multicolored, which right. came in a fingering, it came in a chunky, and it came in a worsted. Right. This is a, a separate altogether. So this is semi-solid. So of. this is semi-solid, hand-dyed, using organic dye. Oh, nice. So using um, nuts, fruit, berries, twigs, mm-hmm. leaves, this sort of thing. Well, and something with less of a kind of toxic imprint right like I mean organic dyes are just that right they're mm-hmm. they're a little safer on the environment and they are the, there's a few things you need to watch out for with organic dyes so you know you can see I don't know if the camera can pick it up but it's definitely a semi-solid yes mm-hmm. and this is uh, this color is grape leaf and so dye lots are incredibly important because this is also grape leaf Wow, oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. So, you know. Um, so, how big are lots, John? Like when we order. Um, uh, well, our when we order, right. our shipment should all be in the same lot. Oh, it should. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, it doesn't. And you order by the hundreds of skeins of yarn. We order by, you know, f- between 1,500 kilos at a time. Okay. Yeah. And a kilo has. 10 times 100 grams. Right, course. 10 skeins. Yeah. So this um, so this particular quality, um, it, the yarn is um, spun in Italy. Wow. Yeah. So it's that um, Italian twist or um, HD twist. So it has that, mm-hmm. you know, really high definition of stitch, of stitch, um, uh, um, texture. Texture, yeah. It really shows the stitches. So when you're doing a cable or something, you're going to see a nice oh, pop. Of it those pops, stitches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, then it's sent to Turkey and it's hand dyed um, by the same people or who are doing the unique multicolored. Right. Yeah. And didn't you say that they're they're kind of um, local folks? Yeah, it's a family business. Mm-hmm. Um, they've not been around for very long. Um, I ca- I can't tell you exactly how many years, but I believe it's under two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, so um, and, and they they've do, got a nice um, program with the trees. Yeah, too. they have I've, a nice story. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're helping to replant uh, different parts of Africa uh, that have been deforested, and um, so you know that's a dono- donation from every skein that our customers buy. That's goes correct. Towards that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So gorgeous color range. Um, another nice thing about. Um, uh, earth yarns is they offer free patterns 
they don't charge for patterns. Oh, nice. Yeah. So your customer can come in and look through all the free leaflets that you've downloaded, mm -hmm. or they can actually go on to um, uh, a pattern supplier, online pattern supply company, um, and uh, they can download the patterns mm -hmm. from there. Well, and I noticed that there's a number of designers who have picked up on this yeah. line already, too. Mm -hmm. There's that beautiful shawl. The papillon. With, yeah, with yeah. the short rose. Um, yeah. Forget who's. We'll have to look that up and add that as a show note, Cynthia, but a beautiful shawl yeah. has been designed out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, great. So this is something new. So, um, again, uh, four-ply or fingering mm -hmm. and a worsted weight. Nice. Another new product from them um, are these wonderful little color blocking kits. Oh. Okay. And they come in a beautiful selection of colors. Now, is that a cotton? It's a cotton viscose blend. Oh, nice. And so within each kit, you get four balls of yarn gradiated down to white. So oh. it's always the main color gradiated to white. Mm -hmm. So you'd have blue, two gradients down to white, pink, right. two gradients down to white. So are they doing it um, by twisting the yarns? Like, is it a four strand and... Mm -hmm. The blacks, four blacks, and then... It appears that way, okay. but in fact it's not. Oh, okay, good. Well, no. how do they do it's it? It's dyed. Then? Okay. Yeah. And you can see the black is not a, a pure solid. It's right. a semi-solid. Yeah. Well, uh, isn't that neat? And then within each kit... They you, come with the little package, too? They come in this little, this cute little zippy pouch. Yeah. Okay. And within each package comes the uh, pattern for the gradient baby blanket. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, the thing is, you know, not everybody, of course, wants to knit um, a baby blanket. A baby blanket. Mm -hmm. And so, if that's the case, then what your customers can do, or you guys can do for your customers, is you can download any one of these seven, four on this side. Mm hmm. Oh, there's a couple shawls and yeah. a, a top. That's right. And then there's three on this side, though. So seven in total patterns can be downloaded for free, and a gradient kit will finish any one of those garments. Oh, good. Well, one kit? One kit, <clears throat> yeah. There's over 800 meters in this kit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, so it's And this is a DK weight, which is really it's a nice. a light DK. Light DK? Yeah. So we're looking at... 27 stitches, 30 rows yeah. on a US 3 to 6. That's a quite a range. Light, a very light DK. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. More like a sport weight. Yeah. 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 You know. Um, Do you, you know, gauge, you know, gauge is very subjective. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like people say, oh, I'm going to knit a baby blanket. Well, you know, how big's a baby blanket nowadays? Yes. You know, baby blankets used to be quite large, and now they're, you know, mm -hmm. the size of a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But uh, do you no. do you see a lot of this too, John? Like I'm seeing um, ball bands now come out with real ranges on yeah. sizes, yeah. and even myself, I've been gauging a yarn, and I'll gauge it on, I'll, I'll knit it up on a two and a half, I'll knit it up on a three, and then on a four. Mm -hmm. And you know they're all nice fabrics. That's right. That you can make. Yeah. They're just different. Yeah, it's what it's really what. Um, well, everyone has different tension. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you put a tension of 22 stitches on a four on a ball of, on a, on a ball band. Well, you know, somebody might get that, mm -hmm. but not everybody's going to get that. No. And this comes back to do your tension swatch. Right. Yeah. 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 There you go. You heard it from the owner of Estelle Yarns. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to do your tension swap. You have to do a tension swap. So that's also another nice, uh, you know, summertime project. It's easy. Pick it up. You know, you go to the lake or camp and, um, you It's know, all ready to go. It's portable. It's yeah. very portable. Okay, so, John, I wanted to ask you a little bit, too, because Cynthia and I, about a year or two ago, we had a chance to come out and visit you in yes. Toronto. That was so much fun. John showed us around the warehouse and where they keep all the incredible yarns and... Uh, all the new samples. It was was a that great. That was our 40th anniversary. Your 40th anniversary. I got yeah. to meet your mum and right. your dad. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. So you know you've got a family run business. We have a family right. run business. What can you tell us about Estelle? Like, well, um, you know, my mother started the business 40 years ago, um, originally with um, cruel embroidery kits, 
and Isn't that something? yeah, and she would design cruel embroidery kits, and um, you know the collection grew, and then um, I think they went. My folks went back to the UK on a holiday to see the family, and there was a trade show, and she came back with two yarns uh, from a company called Sunbeam, and one of them was a oiled Aran, and the other one was a silk and wool called Shantung, and. You know, the Canadian market, you know, 40 years ago hadn't really seen yarns like that. No, no. And so uh, they took off. And then the company just grew from there uh, to where we are today, which is, um, you know, my brother and I, we were looking after the business. Mm -hmm. and, um, and How uh, many employees do you have? I think we have about 15 yeah, 15. And we have a, you know, we have a number of reps in key territories. Like we have reps um, that are not family that are out on the island. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, in Quebec, we have a, a French speaking rep. And then uh, between myself, uh, Chris and his wife, Marcia, uh, we cover the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So it's still a very small business, a small yeah. family business. Well, you know, we, uh, we, we feel it's important that you know, we as the owners and the principals of the company are the ones that come out and see the stores. Yeah. Because no one knows the product better than yourself. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, yeah. you sell yarns, you, you distribute for Cascade, mm -hmm. for Lang, for King Cole, and probably a, a host of other ones. Um, Filature um, de Crosa, Borgo de Pazzi, um, uh, Unique. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. Earth yarns. Earth yarns. Yeah. And how, so how do you find out about these companies? Like, So, you know, uh, um, we, uh, you know, we go to trade shows, of mm -hmm. course, that are just for trade. And um, because we've been in the business for so long, we have a lot of connections. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of cases, um, companies are approaching us. Well, no, that's that's kind of like Manos, right? Yeah. They, they came and asked you to distribute for yeah, them? Yeah, they approached us, and Earth approached us, mm -hmm. um, because, well, you know, we're well known mm -hmm. um, as the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of nice to partner with someone that has an existing distribution channel, too, throughout yes, Canada, exactly, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. Do you distribute in any other countries besides Canada? No, no, no. we are... Uh, we focus on Canada, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to do the best job that we can in the Canadian market and uh, not to uh, stretch ourselves thin, you know, by trying to take over other markets. Right, you know? yeah, yeah. And we do have a number of yarns under our own label, and so we have uh, mills um, under contract in uh, South America that produce beautiful yarns for us. And, um, and that's a very exciting part of the business because you're actually creating the yarn right. and you're creating your palette. And um, and uh, so you're doing it from start to finish, creating the label. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, having designers produce, you know, some nice patterns for it. So, yeah, fun. It, it's, uh, it's fun. It's very fun. It's a very nice business to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Canadians, because I know, you know, we've talked about yeah. this before. Some of our customers um, want specific, unique things at mm -hmm. certain times. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Canadians, um, they knit with everything, mm -hmm. you know, from acrylic to up to, you know, yak, silk and cashmere and all everything in between. But, um, you know, where we sell the different fibers, it is, it is, there is a difference within the country. Regionally? Regionally. Like there's things that we can sell in Vancouver that, you know, um, they just eat it up, which, you know, back east, they're not so keen on. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, in rural communities, they like to knit with different yarns. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, well, wearability, you know, the environment that you're living in. You know, it has to do with the wrap as well. Like I have a yarn here from Lang, which I'm going to show you, okay. which is a beautiful new yarn. I've done extremely well with it all across the country. Mm -hmm. Other reps haven't sold it at all. Yeah. And so why is that? Well, you know, it has to do with the rep's taste. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So this is a new yarn from Lang. It's called Milton. Um, it's a, a cotton and nylon blend. And, you know, I, I liken the effect to um, that Italian designer, Massoni. Ah, with the striping? The striping. Okay. Yeah. The striping is really, really beautiful. 
You know, John, this actually kind of reminds me a little bit of hand spun. Yeah. You know, it, it has that look, doesn't it? Where yeah. the different colored threads are sort of wound around. So here's a shot of the the red when it's actually knit wow. up. Wow, that's so pretty. There. Now, again, you know, knit up, uh, first thing that comes to mind for me are the fade shawls. Right. That are so popular. Yeah. Right? Like, these are probably, I would imagine that these are different skeins of yarn. Correct. Where these split. Yeah, you can are. see it's split by this color number. Right. So you could take, say, four skeins of yarn and create your own fade. Yeah, totally. Like this. Is this, this is kind of what they've done to create your sample, right? Yes, that's right. That's beautiful. And even just, you know, a nice, something simple like, a, you know, uh, a summer scarf or a summer right. towel or a wrap out of this. You know, a, t a tank top or a tee would be beautiful in right. this underneath the jacket. I like the way you've got this knit up too because this helps us kind of see what sort of drape might be in this yeah. if we were to knit it into a top on, I'm guessing, probably a five mil needle or something here, would you say? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's even that high, to be honest. It looks uh, quite loose. Yeah, this one maybe, it's done, the sample's done on a five, but I was thinking a four and a half. Mm -hmm. and, and these are machine knit too, right? Yes, so they we're are. gonna get some um, tension differences there. Yeah. But this is lovely yarn. Yeah, there's a coloring. Lang Milton. Lang is known for color. Uh, yeah, and they've been around for a long time, 150 right? years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And they also are a family-owned business. And are they in Germany or Switzerland? Switzerland. Okay. Yeah. So do you ever get to the UK? Do you get to... You well, know, we go to... Um, we do go to shows over in, uh, mm -hmm. in Europe for sure. And we do go to the mills. Um, so, you know, there's a show we go to in March um, where we, you know meet with all our suppliers from all over the world mm -hmm. and um, is that yeah. where you can get, kind of catch up on trends and find out what's that's exactly it yeah and you know we really at that time have put autumn winter for next year to bed but you know by going to that show it makes us um, it reassures us as to the decisions that we've made right and then we can maybe find a few things that you know will tweak the line to make the collection look better yeah you know because that's key the collection we don't look at it as one yarn or one company it's a collection that mm -hmm. we're showing from all these different brands right and by having like say four or five brands you might have overlaps with For some sure. of them too right oh yeah how and, do you handle that well you know we just show it to you guys and you know There'll be different fiber contents, similar yarns, different fiber content, different prices, and um, you know the shops are the ones that we allow to choose mm -hmm. to yeah. make the decision. Well, John, thank you so much My today pleasure. for coming out. It's been wonderful. Um, just got a couple of more questions. For okay. you. Just short ones though this time. So I just want to know: Do you knit? Yes, of course. Okay. Um, have you got anything on your needles right now? I do have something on my needles. Can you talk about it? I can. It's, uh, I think it's going to be a sweater because I'm at the armhole. So I oh. have to make a decision if it's going to be a vest or a sweater at this point. And it is a yak and silk blend in a worsted weight. And who, what company is that it's from? It's from Lang. From Lang. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Well, I was going to ask you, do you prefer, you know, wool or acrylic? But I think I kind of know the answer yeah, to that yeah. one. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. I, I like the nice fibers. And uh, to be honest with you, worsted is not my comfort weight is to it? knit what, with. What do you like to knit with? Um, I'm more of a 3.75 to 4. Okay, so yeah. a DK. Yeah, yeah, finer knitting, mm -hmm. um, even, you know, even smaller is great. Yeah. yeah. So if you were going to go out on the limb, what would it be? You know, stripes or texture? Or it's texture for me. Is it? Yeah. So you would knit up something that, you know, had a real soft kind of um, halo to yeah, it? Yeah, like a silk tweed or uh, mm -hmm. something like that I would be very appealing to me. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Well, again, um, thank you so much. We My so pleasure. appreciate you coming out and seeing us. And well, it's nice seeing you guys. So, yeah. You know. All right. So let's get to business and start placing the order.